Hi there, thanks for joining me. So uh, today we're going to continue painting the Sepulchral Guard from Warhammer Underworlds. Now in my last painting video we went ahead and painted up this guy and I think he came out really great. Um, however, I did have some issues with the way that I tried to do some shadows and added a little bit of like black or gray in order to darken uh, some of these Army Painter speed paints. And instead of doing that, um, today what I'd like to try is using some complementary colors in order to um, create shadows using the uh, transparent properties of these Army Painter speed paints. So um, let's give that a try and for starters here we're going to go ahead and use my airbrush to, uh, to prime uh, the rest of the miniatures. So we're starting off here with this Grim Reaper looking uh, skeleton here and uh, we're just hitting all of the metallic areas um, that are already primed silver with um, some thinned down uh, hardened leather. Uh, I'm using this to basically you know, give it an initial um, kind of rusty uh, sort of warm tone. Now I'm still working on how I would like my metallics to look, so we're going to go ahead and experiment uh, with some, you know, different techniques for metal. Uh, we're going to experiment with some texture um, and kind of actually using some of Citadel's technical paints. Uh, but this is the first of our uh, kind of complementary color uh, underpainting, and actually this uh, isn't exactly a complementary color. Um, for this, uh, I want to be putting some brown uh, over the handle of the scythe here um, because I'd like for it to look like dark wood. And I'm using a watered down blood red uh, because brown um, has, you know, pretty much all of the colors in it. Um, so, you know, I feel like we can have a warmer brown or a cooler brown. And I'd like to go for a warmer brown here, so I'm hoping that this red. Uh, brings that out a little bit. Um, on the other hand, this cloak is going to be green. So we are using green's complementary color red. Uh, and it's really this same uh, thinned down blood red. Now we're definitely uh, thinning this down because I would like to get, um, you know, maintain some bright highlights um, so that we have, you know, close to white on the, uh, the very highest raised edges of this cloak. But that looks pretty good. So now we've gone ahead and thinned down some Absolution Green and put this all over that red. And as you can see, um, you know, this doesn't look like there's a red underneath that. Um, the transparent you know, quality of this speed paint, I think makes it uh, pretty great for uh, using this technique of, uh, you know, placing it over a complementary color. Um, I do feel like it gives it just a little bit of a, almost a brown, um, you know, here. But, um, you know, as that dries, I think we're going to see that that really darkens up into a nice, rich, dark green. Um, 
you know, shadowed uh, in what I believe in color theory they would call local color, uh, as opposed to adding black to this. Um, we really have just this nice, um, you know, this nice darkened green. Now, I have some formal training uh, as an artist. I did go essentially to art school for, uh, you know, a couple few years. Um, but we didn't necessarily study um, color theory. Uh, here you can see I'm going ahead and putting that brown uh, over that uh, scythe handle. Again, it looks really nice. Um, you really wouldn't know that there was red underneath that, but uh, especially if you compare it to just a straight, um, you know, uh, this is dark wood, I believe, uh, or if, you know, the straight absolution green, um, it definitely gives it a different character, having that underpainting of that thinned down blood red. Now, I would like for this cloak to be quite dark, so I'm building up multiple layers of thinned down absolution green. Uh, in fact, I think this might be a little bit of, of not thinned down, um, just kind of pure absolution green. And, you know, what we've gotten is quite a dark cloak with some nice green uh, highlights to it. Um, and I believe, actually, maybe at the end there, I'd added uh, a little bit of camo cloak because uh, the absolution green just has, you know, this particular um, kind of saturated green to it. And the camo cloak, I think, just, um, just shifted the highlights just a little bit. Uh, in a direction that I liked. So uh, now we're going to go ahead and add in our um, pallid bone. And what we've painted underneath this pallid bone is uh, just a little bit of runic gray. So again, this is going to have a similar effect to the red underneath the green uh, because runic gray is a bit blue and pallid bone is a bit orange yellowish, right? Um, and if you go across the color wheel to the complement of, of orange, you get blue. Uh, you know, if it's a little more yellow, it's a little more purple, but, um, you know, we're going ahead and trying this out. And, you know, I spent some time on this bone. I'm um, getting, I think, a little bit more of that runic gray into the darkest areas, and I'm kind of comparing it really directly to that previous miniature because I want to see, you know, is this doing what I want it to do? Am I getting a similar, um, you know, level of darks to, to lights? Uh, and I think that, you know, it's this, this is looking quite good. Um, here I'm going ahead and putting just a little bit uh, more of a pure pallid bone over the rib cage area. Um, and it's really letting those uh, darks kind of pop just a little bit from that Rudica Gray. So now we're gonna go ahead and do just a little bit of dry brushing on the, um, you know, the metal areas. So these areas have had um, a little bit of that thinned down hardened leather uh, that was over top of the silver, and I believe I actually went over that again, uh, also with a Runica Gray, the same uh, the same Runica Gray that we used on the bone. Uh, now we're giving it just a little bit of a, a silver highlight, and that's just about it. Uh, we're going to go ahead and do the base now. Uh, these bases I've just been using some Grim Black, uh, again typically thinned down a little bit, but I really want to have the feeling um, that. You know, this is this kind of dank crypt, and I like the idea of having uh, blues and greens. Um, you know, uh, some of the bone color in there, um, you know, mixed with the, the blue, it becomes a little more green, but it's, you know, you've got some kind of oranges, yellows in there. Um, just a, a range of different colors. Now, these Warhammer Underworlds miniatures have sculpted bases, so that's something that uh, I definitely am interested in about these, aside from the sculpts just being quite nice and being new sculpts to the um, Warhammer range. Uh, they also have these sculpted bases, so uh, it's a little bit of a time saver, I feel like. Um, you can just paint them up, and then uh, I'm going ahead doing a little bit of dry brushing here of some, uh, some gray, stone gray, I believe, and then we're just trimming the uh, base in black.
And there is our completed miniature uh, next to the previous miniature. And we'll see uh, these two minis in their finished state uh, at the end of the video. But now we're moving on to the next mini. Uh, now this one, uh, I you kind of missed the uh, initial step of getting that runic gray on all of the bone areas. And uh, I also put a little bit of Gravelord gray on the tombstone, uh, the gravestone in the back. Now we're uh, going ahead and also doing um, some hardened leather. I believe this is thinned down, but I think it's thinned down less than it was on the last, um, you know, weapon uh, on the previous mini. Uh, I would I'm tr playing around with getting these metallics maybe a little dirtier. Uh, in fact, we're going to go ahead and use some technical paints uh, to put some weathering on this model. Um, you know, I'm getting back into miniature painting to an extent, and some of the mini painting that I did was uh, decades ago. So uh, some of the tools and techniques have evolved over time, um, and some of these weathering, you know, these options for uh, weathering with technical paints and things like that just weren't really available previously, so I'm excited uh, to try those out and I'm going to be experimenting with them. Uh, here we're getting our thinned down palette bone onto all of the bone parts. So again, over top of that runic gray, uh, we've done a couple layers of pallid bone, and I think it looks quite nice. I am really going out of my way to try to preserve uh, some of the, the the bright highlights from that initial, you know, layer of, of prime, really, the white prime, uh, especially around the, the skull. And speaking of white, we're also painting this cloth white as well. Now, especially because this miniature, you know, this skeleton is climbing out of the grave, it's crawling out of the ground. My assumption would be that this white cloth would be quite dirty and messy. And I don't know that I fully capture how dirty and messy it probably would be uh, coming out of here, but um, I actually really like how this Army Painter Speed Paint white looks. It comes out looking like a, a gray, right, initially, but as it dries, it really lightens, and uh, and actually, it really looks like a very nice white. Um, now we're going to put a little bit of runic gray again over top of this um, kind of thinned down hardened leather on this silver. I don't know if this is exactly the technique that I want to use on my metals, but I I do like the idea of um, working with these blues and oranges, you know, sort of blues and browns, kind of kind of a sepia and blue uh, mix, and that can, uh, I think, yield some nice results. And I'm trying to, you know, give it the impression of, like, metal that has been darkened. Now, we're using, um, I guess, the first of our it's not really text technical paint, it's a texture paint. This is Astro Granite, um, and I'm using this to just fill in and uh, kind of blend together some of the elements here where the skeleton is climbing out of the ground. Um, you know, it looks a little toy-like, so I'm trying to get some of this nice texture paint in there. It has some, you know, sand, grit, particle, matter, I'm just using a really old crummy brush here. And I think that this color is okay uh, with the colors that we have to not really worry too much about, um, you know, painting over it. It should blend in with our base quite nicely. Now we're doing just a little bit of uh, dry brushing with some metallic on the sword here as well. Again, I'm going to be refining this technique as I go, um, but I'm still kind of working on, you know, how how do we make these these metallics, uh, especially kind of these old rusty swords, look really cool. So here is uh, a Citadel Technical paint. This is Riza Rust. Um, now, I believe it's listed as kind of a sort of a 
dry brush paint slash wet brush paint <laughs> somewhere in between. Um, so I'm just trying to kind of stipple it on here again with this uh, just really old brush. Um, it's a it's a yellowish kind of you know oxidized iron color. Uh, it's very rusty looking. Uh, I think the finished result is not quite as orange as it looks coming out of the pot, but it is a bit orangey. And in order to compensate for that, because it really looks like it needs some type of additional shadows or kind of grime to it, uh, I'm using some of this typhus corrosion. Again, um, we're going to be mostly stippling this on. Um, I do sort of try to get it into the visible divots on the sword. Um, and I think actually this combination of typhus corrosion, corrosion and riser rust so far is my favorite look for something that's that's really rusty. It's a pretty realistic rust effect. Uh, it's at the very least uh, probably the best um, sort of look for rust that I've found so far. Definitely if you guys have any recommendations for how you do rust, uh, let me know. Now next up we're using uh, this typhus corrosion actually on the miniature, um, especially because the skeleton is crawling its way out of the ground. I'm wondering if this typhus corrosion being just sort of brown and icky, uh, it also has um, some grit in it. Um, is actually going to just be really good for kind of blending this skeleton into the uh, the earth that it's crawling out of. Um, certainly the the fabric uh, and the bone itself uh, I feel like would be quite dirty and covered in, in grime and so I'm trying to capture some of that while still sort of retaining um, you know some good highlights and focus on like the face of the model so we get something that I don't know if it's entirely realistic, but I think it's actually quite nice looking. And now as usual, uh, we're going to move on to uh, coloring our base. As we get our dry brush in here, um, do a, a little dry brushing on the gravestone as well. And now we're going to color the rim of our base black. And here's a sneak peek of the completed model. So today we tried doing some underpainting with complementary colors or at the very least colors that like let's say appear in the the brown um, and we were able to give like our dark wood um, a really different character uh, which I think is really nice. Um, I was also in that first model really trying to um, get some dark colors to contrast with the light bone and I think I was you know relatively successful in that especially with the handle for the scythe and for the dark green cloak. Um, in the second miniature we uh, tried out some uh, weathering techniques which I think uh, were also quite successful. Um, I kind of like how that sword turned out and uh, you know, without further ado let's go ahead and take a look at these two finished models. Yeah, we want retribution Oh yeah, we want retribution